Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe switch up the accents, just like loosen it up. I really want to do a Russian accent really bad. Hello, like welcome to Shrink Think Podcast. Yes, welcome to myself, to this place. Um, very good to be here because because I'm here, quite frankly, everything is better. Huh? You know, I have to say, Dimitri, you do Russian accent better than I do. I don't know about that. Uh, just kind of one of things that I try really hard to be good at, huh? It's very natural for you, like you grew up. In Mother Russia, yeah. Exactly, uh, motherland. Motherland told uh, if mother did not want me to have it, um, then I would not have it. If mother wanted me to have it, then I would have it. It's very straightforward. Yep, that's why nothing is my responsibility. Let's record podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the Shrink Think Podcast. We are thrilled today to be back. I know. Is that synonymous with something? Excited! <laughs> Excited to be here, as always. We love doing our podcast. We, and also, honestly, we just love hanging out together. And we're so glad that you guys are here to join us. We are doing a follow-up to the previous episode um, on fixing your parenting mistakes. That was kind of geared towards the parents, and this one is toward the uh, the adult children, I guess. And we're gonna call this episode. What? I don't remember. What are we gonna call the episode? <laughs> yeah. Um, when when your parents when your parents won't change. Yeah, when your parents won't change. When your parents were. You know, I was thinking. Except I did not know you were gonna ask me. That. <laughs> I know. Pop quiz. <laughs> what did we like, just what? talk about? <laughs> I know. It's insane. When your parents just won't change. And because here's the situation, a lot of you, if you're listening, you are in your 30s or 40s and you are trying to repair some of your relationship with your, your parents, right? Maybe you've started your own family or you've had some separation from them from childhood for a while. You've seen some things, maybe even you've done some therapy for yourself and you realize some of these things that have happened and you want to confront your parents. Maybe you even have confronted them. And just like we had a guest on our show, uh, Luther Lexington, just like this guy, um, thanks for being here last time again, shout out. Um, just like him, if your parent just refuses to see or understand or take responsibility, or maybe they get shut down, flooded, overwhelmed, defensive, all of those things, any of those things, it can be really difficult. And you as a adult child, are left with, what do I do when my parent just won't change? Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's, as you were saying, those things flooded and defensive. I was thinking, you know, our audience would would probably use, potentially use that language, right? You know, and I'm and you said 30s and 40s. I mean, we could be, this could very easily be somebody in their 20s also. Um, and the, the reality is, is like, you would say like defensive to your parent and they would look at you like a space alien, like, what do you mean? Def I'm not defending anything. This is just the way. <laughs> just the right. way to, don't call me defensive. <laughs> right. You know, they might not even really get what you're saying with some of the stuff, and and you kind of know that. So some of this is even a piece of it is like what language to use um, when you've talked. And so there's going to be elements uh, of this episode where you may be wanting us to help you find another way to say something. You know, might be looking for that in your mind of like there's got to be a way to bridge this gap here. Um, I just want more of them. I'm not really trying to condemn them. They think that I am and um, and they just won't talk. Or it could be like, they really just don't seem to care. Is there a way I can convince them? Is there something you guys are gonna say that's gonna help me go, oh, okay, I, maybe they'll say it that way. Yeah, and so that's a great question. And the answer is no, there's nothing. There's nothing that really anybody can say or do that can convince somebody of something that they don't want to be convinced about or they're not open or receptive to. And so there's no magic, you know, bullet, there's no red pill that's going to like fix everything and solve everything. Um, but we're hoping at least to kind of open your eyes to what's going on and what the process is like to, and you said accepting defeat, I guess in a certain sense, accept what is so that you can move on. And it, sometimes maybe that means um, a relationship can improve with them, um, or more likely it means that you can move on from what was into something, or move on and let go of what was 
and embrace something that's new and different that you can be okay with. So I guess I would just want to start out from kind of this base foundation um, of what's going on. You are a child and you've got parents, right? And you love your parent. Um, you may not have feelings of love for your parent, like you're excited to see them, you're thrilled with the job that they did, or um, you are hoping and excited for them to talk to you, or maybe with the holidays coming up, that you're looking forward to them coming over and spending a day or even two days or a week with you or whatever. You're not excited about any of that because of the things that happened in childhood. But the thing is, you still love your parent. You still want a relationship with them. And that's normal because every child is created with a desire for their parents' affection and love and um, pride, right? You want your parents to be proud of you, to like you, love you, and enjoy you. That's very normal. If you did not have that and you did not want that, we would have a different episode for you <laughs> and maybe some medication. <laughs> <laughs> you are not normal. <laughs> yeah, right. Every baby uh, needs that. That's every baby needs all that attention and love um, and, and all that. And every kid does. And so we're talking to you as a child right now, even though you're an adult, right? To, to get into that space of what did you need, you know, back then? And you still need it now. And there's a longing that you have in you that actually um, kind of taints and filters the relationship that you have right now that's struggling so hard that it's probably a huge element of why you don't want to be around them or you don't feel like you can be you around them at all. You have to be someone else and it's so much energy to do that that you don't want to go because it's like, oh yeah, I'm just going to have to, oh, and now so my job because I'm the lady and my dad wants me to, so I have to be in there with my mom and making all the food and I never freaking knew how to make food anyway. But because I'm a woman, I got to be in there making the holiday meal with my mom, which I don't even really like being around that much because all she's going to do is talk about the same blah, blah, blah. You know, it's it's that type of potential thing. I'm sure that's not all of it. Yeah, yeah. Or or I was thinking of another one that, um, that several people have uh, said to me. It's like, um, and this is common with, you know, with guys, and this is why I think Luther is a great example of this. It's like, you know, maybe everybody else in the family is like, okay, you're like, hey, mom, you know, hey, sis, hey, bro, or whatever. Hey, dad. You know, it's kind of like there's this, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. because like this person, you know, for whatever reason, like it just is, um, it, you just, they don't, you don't get along or there's something missing there. There's not this connection that you, you want to have and you long to have. So if you're the adult, a child in this case, first of all, it's normal to have those feelings, but also you don't need to feel guilty for having them. Um, and you don't need to feel ashamed. Like there's nothing wrong with you for still wanting that kind of a relationship with your parent, even if you've been through the ringer with them, even if you've experienced a lot of abuse or a lot of terrible things, um, treatment from mm. this parent, a lot of people will say, well, I feel really guilty for this. I shouldn't after everything mm. that's happened. And I, and I will be quick to say, no, of course you should. Just like you said, Nate, that that, that child in you is still there and still longs for that relationship or that connection. And what's happened is that has not been provided and you're in a space where you're continually looking for that. And if it's not going to happen, then we have to move into a period of grief where we have to grieve this. And so we'll talk about that in a minute here. I know that seems kind of heavy, um, but ultimately that's what allows you to move forward. And that's kind of why I'm saying, you know, there's nothing we can say that's gonna change it. We have to work toward acceptance of what is. You know, th I'm realizing as we're talking here, there is another side to this, which is that those um, firstborns, uh, the kids that were successful, like you're an adult, you're, um, and I'm saying firstborns, because that's just, just, it's a generalization, but it is more likely if you're flipping a coin to, with, for a firstborn, to just go like, I'm good, bro, I don't need my, I don't need this, I'm fine. I've always been fine. But you might have parents that, think they are closer to you than they are or that want more of a relationship and they keep asking for more and you're like bro i would you weren't there and I, I am fine like i don't want to talk to you about these things whatever they happen to be and so it's like it's it's i don't believe that to be a different episode it's more of like a different experience of grief because it's coming to terms with okay well they want this they they may have always wanted that 
and they may have been very immature and more needy as parents and they needed more from you. They needed to know that they were okay as parents. So they kind of kept putting themselves in a situation for you to validate them. And it feels the freaking same, you know, like all the way, all the way to now. Right. Because because ultimately, you know, we're talking about um, growing up and you've got this child inside of you. I mean, they are the same as well. They've got a child inside of them or they've got a part of them that maybe felt really inadequate or insecure as a parent. And that part of them never really healed or, or recovered or has grown up from that. So when your child is coming to them saying, hey, mom or dad, um, you know, I would like to talk about what happened or I'd like something different from you. Can we can we change our relationship or I'd like to improve it or whatever um, because these bad things happen and I need to address these bad things or, or at least a, acknowledge that these things happened and they impacted me in this way. Well, when you do that, it impacts that like insecure part of them. They're like, oh no, I'm not getting the validation that I needed. And you're like, okay, more of this. Right, now it's not that right. They make it about something else. They make it about themselves, really. And then, which is a weird irony because you do want to talk to them, but, but you know, as you've just said that, it's going nowhere. Right, you want to make it about them, but not in that way. You're like, <laughs> I'm gonna make it about you, but not into like the pit of shame. <laughs> right. So the, I guess, so the first thing is, you know, that it's okay to want the, to have these feelings of longing or whatever. And then we have to start by um, operating in reality. We have to accept what is. We have to accept what was, what is, and what is likely to be. And in another sense, it's like saying we have to accept what wasn't, what isn't, and what never will be. That's depressing, bro. Yeah, it is. That's a lot of grief. It really is. Because ultimately, like normally what I'll do when um, when clients come in and uh, and we're talking about this issue, I've got this you know, large, rectangular, uh, horizontally um, hung whiteboard in my office. And I'll take the whiteboard and I'll say, okay, imagine this whole big thing are your expectations and hopes for your parent, right? You would love me and see me and, you know, enjoy me, smile at me, you know, or ask like, how are you doing? Or, um, hey, what's been going on in your life? Just any of these like normal things that you would hope for from a parent. You could fill the entire whiteboard with all of those things that you're hoping, wanting and expecting from your parent. Again, these are very normal, right? And in the middle of the whiteboard, I would draw a little square, a tiny little square and I'd fill it. And I would then say, this whole whiteboard is what your expectations are, and this tiny little square in the middle are what's probably more real, right? And I'm not trying to dramatize it and say like your parents are horrible, awful human beings. It's just, that's what it feels like to let go of all of those hopes and expectations. So the large whiteboard now has to shrink down, you know, like a, a picture on your phone, you have to like crop it, like, you know, pinch to zoom. It's like you have to unpinch or pinch to unzoom to shrink the whiteboard down into this tiny little box, right? Which means you've got to let go of all of those expectations. All of that stuff is stuff you have to grieve and mourn the loss of. It wasn't there. Like they, they didn't ask me those things. They didn't treat me that way. They didn't give me those things. They don't do it now. And likely they're not going to. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I'm just thinking as you're saying that, man, it's so hard because, and, and also I'm aware of, the question that's kind of hanging there is, well, okay, well, how do I do that? Like, when do I do that? You know, um, and I think there's a there's a few different ways um, to to do that. But one of one of the ways to st- like the place to start is kind of where we are right now. Like, it, it, as you're hearing us talk, and then stuff is happening in your mind of like, okay, that's a thing. You know, you st- you probably have maybe some memories. That's right. I'm in your head right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you were there <laughs> right? in your childhood. What's happening? That's right. Creepy. <laughs> Uncle Nate was there. <laughs> oh no. Maybe the problem wasn't your parents. <laughs> it's that Uncle Nate was there in your head. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. So, in those, it, the stuff that's coming up in your memory is the stuff that matters first. And notice how I said that. I'm not saying it matters most. But it matters first because it's the part of it's the part of the situations that um, are the most relevant um, to what we're talking about as far as what you lost. They stick out the most to you. They're the most obvious. So in, intuitively, 
you would need to explore that. You would explore those memories first and try to notice like, why did those come up? What was that? What was I not getting in that? Like what, why is that one important? Cause that seems, some of those are going to seem fine on the surface, but the mere fact that they, that you thought of them as we were talking here is means that they are valid. And because your intuition, we've talked about intuition before, is taking your entire lifespan in a few seconds and presenting what's most likely based on the content that's just happened. And so that means your brain <laughs> thinks that's relevant and there's going to be ties to that. Yeah. And if you go back to like the, this little child in you, right, that was longing for whatever it's um, the, I always say to people that adults are just grown up children and we function the same as children. We have the same needs as children. We just have them and do them in a more adult, complicated sort of a way. But I find it helpful to think in that way because if you go back to childhood and you needed certain things, you still need them now, just in a different kind of a way. So it can be helpful to go back to, you know, if these things are coming up for you, to be thinking about, okay, when I was a child or if a child was there, what did they not get? What did I need and not get? And therefore, those are things that I need to grieve the loss of. And there's a, let me sort of interject something, because this is the place where people will say, but, but, you know, um, my dad, you know, uh, was, he, he was in the war and he was like impacted by it and he, you know, lived a really hard life. Um, You're talking about Luther again. <laughs> yeah, probably. He's just such a great, a great example of, you know, of what we're talking about, right? Which is why we had him on the show. Um, you can, it's tricky because there are great reasons and excuses that your parents could not function the way that you needed them to function. And so people will be like, well, I can't say that because they had a hard life or they went through this or they went through worse. Therefore, my experience doesn't matter or my feelings should not. Well, and I go, as, I go as far as I can't need that. It's just not a need. Like, nope, don't need that. Or, you know, cause it's just X the box right up front. The problem with that is you're, you actually do. So it's it's one of those things. Some of this could be like you're saying, Aaron. This this coming to terms with the reality of, you did need things that you did not think that you needed because and you just moved on and it didn't even occur to you. Um, and that honestly is huge. That acknowledgement that you needed it. It's it's um, it's like this realization that whoa. Uh, so I did. I personally needed a lot more compassion. I actually did need this person just to be around, like, and um, actually be there. Not even really, like, do anything. You know, yeah, like, that reminds me of the, uh, what was it, that Lego movie? Um, I don't remember which version of it, but it was like, there was this kid who's like one of the superheroes or whatever, and his dad was the the evil guy that like comes into town, like burns it down all the time. He's like, you ruined my life, dad. And the, the evil guy is like, that's impossible. I wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about it's that. It's like, yes, and that's the problem. <laughs> I needed you around. Yeah, so, so what we're talking about really is this idea of confronting things. So in the process begins with just acknowledging that, that this is going on. And um, in light of that, when you acknowledge it, uh, you the next thing you want to do is you want to try to understand or, well, understand is too strong. You want to notice what you feel, like what feelings are attached to that. And um, you might even have, and this is the next level of creepy, you might even realize when you're doing the feelings that you actually have a feeling in your body also, like a place where there's some kind of body response. Um, and that actually can be super helpful. Uh, and that kind of stuff can actually be life changing. Uh, as just one teeny example, if you realized that you, as you were thinking through this and you were feeling some things that if you felt it in your shoulders um, and then started thinking, why do I feel that there? And there's a tightness. And then you start realizing, I have back problems. You're like, <laughs> I have these other things going on. And then you realize like, holy mackerel, like you mean some of my some of those back problems is because of how much stress I'm thinking about this particular connection, this particular need. Yes, you've been carrying that. Your body has been storing it and carrying it this whole time. And let me just say, as we um, kind of head for home here, um, it's okay to sort of acknowledge the reasons or excuses that your parents have for why they couldn't do the things that, they, that you needed them to do. But I always think about this chronologically, you have to first acknowledge the emotions and impacts that you experienced. 
So it's not like you can't include any of that stuff. It's that you need to first acknowledge your impacts and your experiences, and then you need to mourn or grieve, you know, the losses of what happened. And once you're done working through your feelings, then you can add in that piece of like, okay, I feel like resolved about that. Not that anything is better between the two of us, but just I've accepted it, right? That's kind of what grieving is. It's like a a process of moving from zero acceptance to full acceptance of what is. And then once you've done that, you're sort of, you've made peace with what is. And now you can say, well, they lived. what's real and realistic so so this is we're not giving therapy right now just a reminder you heard the disclaimer that's true um what were the three things that you said it was that that what you didn't get you didn't exist you said you, like, yeah you have to like kind of mourn what was what isn't and what never will be so what wasn't okay so the reason why i'm asking is because i have an idea here to give you guys as we close up um after you at one thing you can do is you're acknowledging what we've and what i've already said the next step would be um, maybe going on a walk, going somewhere out, in, if you can, some where there's there's nature, and just reflecting in your walk. And if you are down under, you can do a walkabout. It's a good thing to do. <laughs> oh, my. And, you want to throw that in there. <laughs> and and uh, Walkabout. The other... <laughs> it's like, I think of Austin Powers. <laughs> um, the other thing would be, like, journaling. You could literally put in the title of the page what wasn't what isn't and what will never be and then just honestly kind of free associating writing like just a list of what of what's going on there's another uh, what you missed out on one other idea to add to the puzzle there of a reference point is you can look on you can google um or whatever your search engine is a universal list of human needs and they have these and i would just you know look at what that because it's a compiled list that helps you to know like oh. what need you actually might not think that you need, but you actually did need. Yeah, that's a great idea because some it's kind of like in EMDR, we do these like, you know, um, uh, cognitions, these negative cognitions of like, oh, I'm not good enough or whatever. And then we need to replace that with like these positive cognitions. It's kind of like that list of like, sometimes people just don't know what is going on in them because it's been so familiar it's so familiar and so just every day to them it's like i didn't even know that that was a need that i had i and therefore i didn't even know that it wasn't met i just have lived without it for so long so that can be really helpful maybe in even pinpointing some of the negative experiences that you've had that sort of put words to oh that's why i feel so bad or that's why this thing is missing or whatever i think it's a great idea Go through that process and then give yourself some time to grieve and probably apart from your parent. Like it's not something that you need to do with them. You don't need to share that with them. It's maybe something that you do with a friend or with a therapist um, to walk through that because ultimately accepting what is means I'm no longer surprised by the actions that your parents do. Um, like for example, you know, if, if a parent, you know, always responds in this way, you're like, I can't believe they did that again. It's like, of course they did that. That's what they always do. That's how they respond, right? When you've accepted it, then you've accepted that that's how they're going to respond. And when they do, you're like, yeah, they, they, they did that again. That's what happened, right? And it doesn't impact you. It doesn't activate you and those hurt feelings as much anymore. Therefore, you're able to engage with them in a very different way moving forward. With all of that, little campers, have a great day. Whew, that was good. Yes, I will refer to episode many times. I was dying because you're like, you can Google, and I was like, walk them out. <laughs> I just wanted to say walk them out. I, was like, I just wanted to doing? say walk them out. <laughs> Google walk them out. And then I just could not keep that together. I just like, lost it. <laughs> oh, my word. Uh,